Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR, and today we're going to look at sound design based on Carpla Strong synthesis. Now you may have come across Carpla Strong synthesis before. It's used in Ableton instruments and tension and collision and a lot of physical modeling instruments that attempt to emulate acoustic type plucked and hammered and bowed sounds and use some form of uh, Carpla Strong synthesis. So what we're going to look at today is a bit more crude than some of these more complicated synthesizers, um, but it allows for a lot of either experimental or creative sound design. The sound source for our synthesis is operator, and we just have it generating white noise. So I'm just going to alter the envelope just so that it's a very short sound. In Carpla Strong or feedback type synthesis, um, you just need to drive the process. You just need a very short kind of percussive sound. We'll set something there around nine milliseconds um, to begin with, but we'll probably tweak that and change that to show the variation that adjusting the decay can bring throughout the tutorial. So from here, I'm going to send it into a return channel. And on the return channel, we need a number of devices. We need a delay device. We need some sort of compressor or limiter, and we need a nonlinear amplifier. This nonlinear amplifier can be any number of things that alters the dynamics of the sound. It can be, in my case here, I'm using the overdrive unit, but it could be another compressor limiter. It could be a wave shaper, an amplifier simulator. Again, you can experiment with this and each one will give you slightly different results. The delay times that we're, we're going to work with are in terms of milliseconds. So I'm just using the, the simple delay device here. And I'm going to turn on link and rather than have it synced to the tempo, I'm going to switch it there so that it's on time. So the limiter, the function of the limiter is to, I guess, has a couple of functions to alter the dynamics of the sound and also to control the overall volume so that it doesn't, the sound doesn't explode through your speakers too much. When you're working with this type of synthesis, it's useful to work at lower volumes to begin with because things can get out of hand when you start to experiment with these various devices here. The nonlinear amplifier allows me to, in the case of this one, allows me to alter the tone and the dynamics of the actual sound. The next stage in the process is to create a feedback loop. So what I'm doing here is I'm, the signal has been sent from our, our operator here into the first channel. And then I'm turning up send B here, routing it into the next channel and there's no device on the next channel. I'm just routing this um, back into the first channel. I have this uh, uh, auxiliary one as a pre-fade send so that I can pull down the channel, our source channel, and that any adjustments I make on the actual volumes here won't affect what's actually been sent out here. So let's start the process. I'm going to just turn on a, have an arpeggiator turned on here. So rather than me having to trigger the sound the whole time, I'm just going to let that play the sound source. So what we're hearing at the moment, we're just hearing the first channel here. So let's look at what we have here. We just have our basic delay device, the limiter and the overdrive. From here, I'm going to route it into return channel B here. And from there, I'm going to route this back into the first return channel. So you have to be careful here with these two sends. If you overdo it, the feedback can get out of control. So this is why I suggest at the beginning working at lower volumes. So once we have a feedback loop engaged here, we can come back to our delay device And you can hear there that the delay time is inversely proportional to the pitch of the sound. If we make the, the source sound slightly longer, you can more clearly hear the pitch actually changing there. Let's experiment with our, our feedback channel. So 
I'm going to look at the overdrive device here and see how it can dramatically change the output of the sound that we're actually hearing. What happens is the tone turned down. It's kind of like a dull, kind of metallic percussion sound. As I sweep it up, it's more like a digital hi-hat type sound. So that's the basic configuration set up. So from here we can experiment with variations on our source sound, adding some effects and adding some more devices to the signal chain. So we can go back to our source sound. So by adjusting the decay there we can get a lot of variation. So it's quite percussive at the minute. If we adjust the attack time, we can get something that you know, simulates something like a bow. Or if we change the, sound, the source sound to something that's more harmonic. So, so far we're in the kind of uh, percussion plucked string type sound. If we experiment more with the, the feedback, get more of a feedback looping, and um, we'll get more sustain to the sounds, and we'll get a more drone-like experimental type soundscape. filter here afterwards I'll uh, just engage that see what that offers us so this the LFO is modulating the, uh, the cutoff frequency Again, as we mentioned earlier, if you alter the delay time, you'll get a different pitch. So again, it's hard to tune it to an exact pitch, but it's this would lend itself to sampling the output, so then you can then load it into a sampler and manipulate it into whatever form that you want it to be. This, uh, we're altering the, the frequency control on the overdrive there. It might lend itself to be modified by an LFO. So I've got an LFO over here, one of a, a Max for Live device. So I'll map that. And yeah. Let's add in some um, delays and reverb and see, see how that happens. So again, we're still only using the, the white noise as the sound source. Let's flip over into something more harmonic again.
by just working with the limited number of controls that we've been looking at here we can get a, a lot of variation from something that's just starting off as basic white noise so hopefully you found that interesting and i'll catch you again next time Thank <laughs> you.